Trigonometry ratios of angles between 90 degrees and 360 degrees. So up to now we were only working in this quadrant. Now we will extend it to this quadrant. Okay. You will find this on page 460 in the Namibia Ordinary Level Mathematics textbook Y equals MX plus C to success. Trigonometrical ratios of angles between 90 and 360 degrees. So far, we have only studied the case of trigonometric ratios for acute angles, smaller than 90, meaning in this quadrant. We will now extend the definitions of trigonometric ratios for acute angles to angles between 90 and 360. Note, we will work with a circle with center at the origin and a radius of one unit. A triangle can be drawn from any point, so any point on this circle, on this circumference. That triangle will always be congruent to a right angle in the first quadrant and will contain an angle theta. The hypotenuse in each triangle is associated with a rotation through an acute, obtuse or reflex angle, meaning just that if I draw it, I'm just almost going to, it's similar, that, that angle will be equal to that, that, that. Okay, let's look first at this sketch. The radius R is always positive. That's very important. So don't forget that this is the radius, or this, or this, or this, the blue or green lines. Depending on the position of the point P, X and Y can be negative, zero, or positive. For example, if P is in the second quadrant, X is negative, while Y is positive. You must just remember it like this. This is zero. So, if it's on a number line, if that is zero, then this, and I'm going to indicate it for you with lines. Let's just do it like this. Then, no, this is incorrect. Let's make blue positive. Then this will be positive, and this will be negative. Remember, if zero is there. This will be positive, and this will be negative. Okay, if the number line is like this. So basically, and this is what I showed you, positive, negative. In this case, I didn't show you this because it's not necessary. Because the triangles is always towards the x-axis. So we only have to focus on this one. But, although it's to the x-axis, can you see that, and I'm going to, this is, okay, let's just get the pen correct. This is positive, this is positive, because it's the positive, it's top. And this will be negative, negative, because it's the bottom. And don't forget, it's almost like what I was showing you there, that R, and I just want to use the ruler again, R will always be positive. Okay, so basically, if you're now going to end up, and I want to show you, I don't have to show you all, but because this is, then I can show you again, don't forget, this is positive, and this is negative. So can you see positive, positive, so all these ratios will be positive. But now, if you're standing at this angle, this angle, don't forget, this will be opposite, this will be adjacent, and this will be hypotenuse. So if I look at sin, opposite, over adjacent, oh no, opposite over hypotenuse. So it's blue, blue, so it's positive. Do you see? If I look at, say, for example, cos, adjacent over hypotenuse. So what is a negative? Think of signs. What is a negative divided by a positive? It's negative. And that's the reason why cos is negative there. If I look at tan, opposite over adjacent, What's a positive divided by a negative? It's negative and that. So the only one that's positive in this quadrant will be sin. Now, you can do exactly the same. Say, don't forget, you're standing there. So again, this is opposite. This is still adjacent and this is hypotenuse. And then you can again start. Sin, opposite, 
over hypotenuse. So it's a positive, it's a negative divided positive, so it will be negative. Cos adjacent over hypotenuse, it will be negative. Tan opposite over adjacent. But what is a negative divided by a negative? That's a positive. And that's why tan is positive. And now you can do exactly the same in this quadrant. You remember you're standing there. So again, this is opposite. This is adjacent. And this is a hypotenuse. So in this case, if I'm going to start here, sin, sin is opposite over hypotenuse. Negative. Can you see? So negative. Cos adjacent over hypotenuse. Positive, positive. Cos is positive. Tan. Opposite over adjacent. Negative divide positive is negative. So the only one that's positive is cos here. Now, and I'm going to show it already for you on this page, because on the other page I don't have the big sketch. But if you look on this page now, okay, let's just take another color. You can take white. And this is what's showing. In this quadrant, all of them was positive. So all positive. In this quadrant, the only that one that was positive was sin was positive. The race was negative. In this quadrant, this one, the only one that was positive was tan is positive. The race is negative. And in this quadrant, the only one that was positive was cos is positive. The race is negative. And that's where we come to the word, and I'm going to show you. Okay. They call it the cost, cost diagram. So the cost diagram tells you which function is positive. So all is positive there, cos is positive there, tan is positive there, and sin is positive. But it's coming from this different x-axis positive, x-axis negative, x-y-axis positive, y-axis negative. Okay, so let's move on. So that's what I showed you though. So we can summarize this information and show only the positive ratios in what we call the cost diagram. The word all goes in the first quadrant and the letters in cost go in anticlockwise. They indicate which ratio is positive in each quadrant. Okay, this is very useful when we do the sums. I want to show you how we do the sums. They give you a function. Find the value of sin theta and tan theta for this. Now, in this case, they don't want theta, they want the ratio. So they want the opposite over the hypotenuse, the opposite over the adjacent. Okay, they want the two values. Now, if I'm, I'm telling you like this one, so I'm tell, I give you the function. Now, don't forget, if I say cos theta is negative, you, you will start by saying, where is cos negative? I know cos is positive here. Here, cos is positive. But where is cos negative? Okay, okay, now, now let's start with, uh, uh, okay, I first want to show you according to this sketch. So cos is negative where? It's going to be there negative, let's just say, and it's going to be there negative. And I just made two separate sketches. So there is where cos is negative, there it's positive. Now I'm just going to fill in this sketch. You don't have to, you, you see a negative, but you can also just remember what I showed you. This is positive. Oh, let's just get the ruler again. This is positive. This is positive. This is negative. This is negative. So basically, if I'm looking at this, I'm going to say, because this is, okay, don't forget, cos, cos, what is cos? Cos is adjacent adjacent okay, I want to be you so ka to pa what is cos adjacent over hypotenuse so adjacent must be 5 and hypotenuse must be 13 but because it's neg so it's negative 5 negative 5 now how do i work out that 12 that's a 90 degree triangle, so I work it out with Pythagoras. I'm just going to say 13 squared, because that's a short one, 
minus 5 squared and I get and I take it's 12. Now remember top there positive there negative. Okay so um, if I'm look, looking at this then, then um, I just have my two sketches <coughs> I'm not this because it's between 0 and 3 so I have to include both but now I just start with the function they want what did they ask sin theta but I have to write it as both so um, don't forget that you are standing there so <coughs> if I stand there this will be opposite this will be adjacent hypotenuse opposite adjacent hypotenuse so basically if I stand there sin is opposite over hypotenuse so 12 over 13 in the first in the second quadrant don't forget <coughs> we are naming it like this this is first quadrant second quadrant third quadrant fourth quadrant so in the second quadrant sin is 12 over 13 in the third quadrant sin is opposite over hypotenuse it's negative 12 over 13 which can be written like this and then the last one um, tan tan is opposite over adjacent so it's 12 over negative 5 and it's opposite over adjacent negative 12 over negative 5 which will give you a positive it's not necessary to know the size of the angle you can find all the ratios if you know the lengths of the sides they, if they give you like this they want the ratios they want the two sides they don't want theta they don't want the angle they want the two sides okay let's just do one I want you to stop the video and I want you to do try now 21 and I want you to do number one. You can continue the video as soon as you are finished. So given that sin theta is three over five. Okay, so let's start there. Now, don't forget. Okay, let's start from the beginning. The first thing that's always very important. Now I'm going to do it on one sketch, so it's going to be easier. So don't always forget. No, oh, let's just get my pen correct cost so this is just to draw the sketch so if I'm going to say sin theta it's just the angle or it can be x or y but now it's theta it's 3 over 5 now you must say I must look at this sign this sign if there is no sign it means positive now where is sin positive sin is positive here and sin is positive here because here sin is negative so it means that I must go and I must in this two qu quadrants I will draw my triangles and it's always towards the x-axis there's my x-axis okay so if I'm looking at this sin so don't forget what sin stands for sin is opposite over hypotenuse so always this is theta don't forget theta is towards the x-axis so if I this is going to be my opposite this is my adjacent that is my hypotenuse standing there opposite adjacent hypotenuse and now I'm going to say okay 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 so if I sin sin is opposite Okay, so I know opposite is free. Um, opposite is free. I will now bring in the signs. Um, hypotenuse, hypotenuse is five. This is working excellent. Do you see why? Can I show you? Because on top of the line, don't forget, it's always positive. If I go down, it's negative. But now it's positive. That's why it's positive. Hypotenuse the hypotenuse the value of r is always positive okay but again I have a problem I must find adjacent this is my 90 degree so I use Pythagoras so if I want to I can even call it I'm just going to because it, it's just rough do your rough on this side and your calculations there so adjacent square is just going to be I'm looking for a short one so it's 5 square minus 3 square which is going to give me 25 minus 9 
and that is going to give me, if I'm going to look at 16, so the adjacent is going to be 4. Okay, so in this case, I worked out that this is 4, but now be careful. This positive, but that side is negative. So it's almost, because it's square root, it's plus minus. So this will be positive 4. Mm -hmm. My pen again. Great. This is positive. Oh, I just don't want to make it. I just want to call it 4 plus minus, and that's negative 4. So always think on a number line, positive, negative, positive, this one will be negative again if I worked with it. Okay, but I did not. So first step, do your sketch. It's between 0 and 360, so you have to think of your whole cost, and you have to think where your cost, your cost functions will be positive. There it will be negative. Okay, now answer the question. Find the value of cos theta. So I have two. I have one answer in the first. Quadrant. Oh, this pen again. Okay, and the other one in the second quadrant. Okay, this stands quadrant. It's just not writing nice now. Okay, so these the two functions. Don't forget, these the two. So it's going to be cos theta. So first do this one. What is cos adjacent over hypotenuse? So adjacent over hypotenuse. So first, first quadrant first. So adjacent over, so it's 4 over 5. And what is cos in this quadrant going to be? And that is going to be, now it's in the second quadrant, so it's adjacent, so it's negative 4 over 5. Okay, and then the next one, it's tan. Tan is opposite over adjacent, so it's 3 over 4. It's not equal for, it must be negative. I just want to do this. I'm struggling with the pen. Okay, let's try it again. So it must be negative 4. Okay, otherwise you can just write it negative 3 over 4. And then this one is going to be tan and that is going to be Okay, let's just see, uh, no, I was incorrect in that one, it was the first quadrant, so opposite over adjacent, after I struggled so much with that negative sign, but it was in this, I was doing this one, in this one, that's 3 over negative 4, oh, this pen is just making me angry, I'm even going to stop this video and do the last part in the second video, and first calibrate this pen, okay. And that's how you do it. Before you go on to the next video, first try number two and three. Look at the back of the textbooks, you will find the answer, or in the teacher's guides, you will find the fully worked solutions.